Hey, it's John from Smart Edition Academy. And in today's video, we're gonna go over the PSAT 8-9 test. This is gonna be your ultimate guide, everything that you need to know to do well on the test and score as high as you can. We're gonna go over what the test is, why it matters, why it's important, how the test is scored, and really everything that you need to know to do well. So with that said, make sure you check out the links in the description below. There are links to our free PSAT 8-9 practice test, our, the Smart Edition Academy online course, and lots of other helpful resources to help you guys do well on the test. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. Now the PSAT 8-9 is offered by the College Board. That is the same test administrator that does the SAT, the PSAT 10, and other tests. So it's really going to be very similar to the actual SAT test. And that's the purpose of the test, to give you a feel for what the SAT will be like, and to also give you a score that will reflect how you would do on the SAT if you had to take the test today. Now the PSAT is a little bit shorter than the SAT, but not by much, and it really covers all the same subjects and topics as the SAT. Some very small differences, we'll talk about that, but uh, you know, aside from that, the PSAT 8-9 scores that you receive will not be sent to any colleges in any way. It's not used in the college application process. So there's always questions around, does the PSAT 8-9 really matter? If it's not being sent to colleges, why does it matter? But there's a couple reasons why it actually does matter. It's really important. One is that it is that benchmark score for you for the SAT, to, so you can know how you would do if you had to take the SAT now. And more importantly, it helps you identify subjects and some topics within those subjects that you might want to improve on as you move through high school and go on to take the SAT. So the score report gives you a really good breakdown to help you understand those things. One of the most important things is that your high school can actually use the PSAT 8-9 scores to determine what your class placement is. So that's gonna be the classes that you may or may not take as you go through high school. And this can include everything from remedial courses, if you didn't do well on a certain subject, all the way up to AP classes, advanced placement, accelerated courses, dual credit courses, where you actually get college credit for some of those high school classes. So it can be really important to help you know, determine what track you take throughout high school. So if you're cert sh uh, shooting for certain classes, this is a really good way to make sure that you're able to take those classes or take classes that are gonna help you uh, do better in certain subjects so you can do well on the SAT. Now let's talk about what is on the test. There's gonna be three sections to the PSAT 8-9, and that is first, evidence-based reading, so a reading section writing and language test, and then there'll be a math section as well. Now, this entire test is multiple choice except for the math section, which will have some fill in the blank or kind of a write in the answer type questions. And the test is going to be 145 minutes, that's two hours and 25 minutes, and it's gonna consist of 120 questions. Now, the way that that breaks down is on the reading section, you'll have 55 minutes to answer 42 questions, the writing section will have 30 minutes to answer 40 questions, and the math is gonna be a total of 60 minutes, and you have 38 questions. Now, we do a much deeper dive into the math section and all of these sections in another video. We'll link that in the description below, along with the free practice test and the online course, so you can check that out there if you wanna do a deeper dive to really understand the topics that are gonna be on each section of the test. Now, the question comes up a lot, what is a good score? And it's really a subjective question. There's no right or wrong answer to that. Now obviously if you get a perfect score that's fantastic but it, your score it really means different things to different people and you know the biggest thing is that it's meant for you to have a score to understand how you would do on the test if you had to take it today. Now we all want to know how to prepare for the test. How can we boost our score to get the best score possible? Now, I'm going to talk about my experience and what I've done to do really well on different standardized tests. And the first thing that I would do is start with a practice test. This helped me get an idea of what the test is like, the format of the test, the types of questions that I would see, the timing of the test, all those types of things. So that's really helpful. And then I would use the score report that I get from a practice test to really help me identify my strengths and weaknesses. Now, I can only speak for the Smart Edition Academy practice test. I don't know of many others that kind of give you this type of score report, but we break down each question within each subject by the topic that it relates to. So you can really understand by the individual topics which ones you did well or didn't do well in by looking at that score, and that will help you identify, more importantly, your weakest areas. 
So once I had a score report and I would understand what my weakest areas were, I would focus my studying on those areas. And you know, how do you study? What do you study with? Well, there's a lot of good resources out there. You're on YouTube now watching this video, so YouTube's obviously a great resource. College Board actually has practice tests, kind of PDF, so they're not uh, as you know, similar to an actual testing environment with the time tests and things like that. But those are all things that will help you. Now additional study tips for the PSAT 8-9. What I would always do is study one specific topic at a time. So that's not one subject but one topic and really focusing more than one study session on that particular topic, whether that's you know under identifying main ideas or evaluating an argument. The more specific you can be in what you're studying so that you're not all over the place, the better. Uh, I would also make sure that I was using study materials that were engaging and interactive. So for me, sitting down with a you know, couple hundred page study guide print book it would kind of put me to sleep. So, you know, but uh, for other people that works really well, but for me, I needed something a little more engaging, interactive. So for that reason, I liked things with videos and you know, different exercises and practice problems and things like that kind of mixed in, things like flashcards all that kind of stuff, so you can kind of break up your study session with uh, different ways to study. Now to register for the test, you need to do this through your school, which is unlike the SAT, which is done through the College Board's website. This, your school is going to set up for you. They're going to have specific dates that they are doing the test, and you, know, you can visit with your guidance counselor to get more information on the test. They should have everything uh, that you would need to know specific to your school for the test. Now there's a few things you should plan to bring on test day with you. Some of these things may seem obvious, but they can really save you if you, you know, versus not having them. So the first thing is going to be uh, number two pencils. You will have a Scantron sheet. So you don't want to break your tip and have to worry about, you know, not having another pencil, asking for one. Bring two or three different number two pencils. Bring a handheld pencil sharpener in case you break the tip on all three. You never know. Uh, bring a handheld one because you can't have anything electric that makes noise or that you'd have to plug in. It is helpful to bring a snack with you. It's a long test, it's over two hours. The chances that you get a little bit hungry uh, is very good and you don't want to be distracted by that, thinking about your stomach growling. So bring something healthy, bring a protein bar or granola bar or just something healthy that'll kind of keep you going through the test. A silent watch is also helpful so you can kind of keep track of the time on your own. And of course bring water, you don't want to be dehydrated and have your performance suffer from that. Bring a photo ID, and lastly, you will want to bring a calculator for that calculator section of the test. Now, College Board has pretty specific calculators that you can use. There's actually a long list, but it is a specific list. If you are bringing a calculator that you've never used before, it's not a good idea. Use that calculator before, get used to it. You don't want to be fumbling for how to turn that calculator on. So that's everything that you need to know for the PSAT 8-9. Like I mentioned, we have a much uh, deeper breakdowns into each of the subjects in different videos so you can check those videos out. There will be links in the description to uh, things from College Board, our free practice tests, our online practice tests, all that good stuff. So check out those links in the description. And if you found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel because they have a lot of videos coming out for PSAT 8-9 and I want you guys to get notifications when those videos come out. So until then, we'll see you guys on the next video.